All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our lethality series. Today, we're going to be talking about open danger areas. And this is a continuation of the video, obviously, from last week, where we covered linear danger areas, which is like, you know, a road, a stream, railroads, uh, clearings for power lines, etc. Now, we're going to talk about open danger areas. If you haven't watched the formations and order of movement video yet, go and watch that as we'll be using terms that I cover in there. All of these really build on each other, so you should watch them, you know, in order. If you're coming across this, you know, randomly, that's fine. Just be aware that there are going to be some terms in here that I have covered in previous videos, and you should watch them first. So go watch that formations in order of movement video first, and then come back to this. We'll be using terms such as traveling and bounding overwatch, and you need to know exactly what those are because we're not going to talk about them uh, in specifics. So without further ado, open danger areas. So small and large open danger areas. There's not really a set definition for large and open danger areas. So a large open danger area would be defined as an area so large that the platoon or squad cannot bypass due to time constrictions to accomplish the primary mission. And a small open danger area would be an area small enough that the platoon can bypass in the time allowed for the mission. So. There's not like a set measurement for these. A, you know, there might be a large clearing, you know, 500 by 500 meters, let's say. That might be a small danger area given you have a lot of time to complete your mission. So you might be able to bypass that. But if you're, you know, crunched on time to hit your objective area or to hit your objective or to get to where you need to get to need to go, then that might be a, a large open danger and you have to utilize a large open danger area crossing, which we will talk about here very shortly. So we'll talk about small open danger areas first. And step one, that lead squad or team is going to halt the element and they're going to signal a danger area. So it's very similar to the linear danger area where you're slashing in a diagonal motion. And for open danger area, you're just going to slash across your neck here. Again, you might have different SOPs in your unit. Uh, but this is generally your open danger area hands and arm signal. All right, step two, the PL or the squad leader is going to move forward to the lead element and they're going to confirm the danger area. The element leader is then going to establish near and far side rally points. Again, these are going to be generally on forward azimuth and back azimuth. Generally, you know, 300 meters potentially into the wood line in either direction. And then that element leader is going to designate the lead squad to bypass the small open danger area using either the detour bypass method or the contour method. So we're going to talk about the detour bypass method here first. So, so the primary pace man is going to suspend their current pace count. He's going to remember it. And they're going to initiate an interim pace count. And they're going to choose an alternate compass or pace man, which, you know, can be the lead team leader. He generally won't be the actual pace man. And he's going to move forward and he's going to offset his compass either 90 degrees left or 90 degrees right as designated by the PL. And they're going to move in that direction until the unit is I'm supposed to say clear of the danger area. And that'll generally be a distance prescribed by the element leader. So the squad leader, or the platoon leader. After moving that set distance, you know, X meters as directed by the PL or the SL, the lead element is going to resume the original azimuth with the original pace man, and he's going to continue with the original pace. So the reason you use an alternate pace man is because you don't want that pace count being factored in to your primary pace count. The primary pace count obviously is how far you are away from the objective. You don't want to factor in this little detour into that and get a incorrect pace count. So the original pace man is now going to resume the original pace and azimuth. They're going to continue on. And then after they clear and get past that open danger area, the alternate pace man is going to again take over, offset his compass 90 degrees the other direction, and move the element in the same distance X amount of meters back to the original azimuth. And this will make sense here with the graphic I will show you here in a second. All right, your other way of crossing a small open danger area is the contour method. So the lead element, again, signals danger area. Element leader is going to confirm the danger area and then chooses to use the contour method. So this one's maybe a little bit faster if you're pressed for time. The PL and this or the squad leader will designate far side and near side rally points once again. And the element leader chooses this time to use the contour method. So he's going to analyze the open danger or yeah, the open danger area. 
and he's going to maybe potentially check his map and he's going to pick which side of the danger area to contour around. And you're going to want to do this as well for the bypass or the the other method we just talked about. And you're going to want to consider the distance, terrain, as well as cover and concealment. Obviously, if there's a huge steep hill on one side, you're going to probably want to use the other side so you're not side sloping the whole way. So he's going to pick right or left, option one, option two. And then that whole unit is going to contour or handrail around that chosen side and ensuring that they're not too close to the open danger area to where they're exposed and they're going to want to use the wood line for cover and concealment. You don't want to obviously go too far into the wood line that you lose physical sight of the open danger area because then you're going to you know end up getting lost and getting off, off azimuth pretty bad. So once they reach that far side rally point, that leader is going to resume the original azimuth to the objective. And you're going to still want to keep a pace count for this. Um, it will be off slightly because you are going to have to take some extra steps here and there. But you should be able to plot where you are on the far side. And then, you know, you might have to redo your pace count calculations to get to wherever you're going just so that it's accurate. All right, so here's a visual representation of those two. So we'll talk detour bypass method. So they come up, they spot the small open danger area, and they're going to choose to use the, the bypass method. So take the alternate pace man takes over here, and he's going to take the 90 degrees, you know, right, and he's going to keep that pace count. Original pace man's going to take over. He's going to take them all the way up till they're clear of the danger area. And then the alternate paceman is going to take back over and take him back the exact same pace count he is so that effectively they are on the same azimuth here. And then this is the contour method. So they chose to go left here and they're contouring around the edge of the wood line until the far side rally point is reached. So pretty, pretty simple. So now we're going to talk large open danger area. So Rel you know, same steps as all these other danger areas. Lead element, hostile platoon, danger area. Element leader is going to move forward with the FO or the RTO, and they're going to confirm the danger area. And the reason you want to move forward with your FO and RTO is you will have fires planned for all of your danger areas, and you want to move forward with them in case there are enemy occupying that danger area, and then you'd be able to immediately call for fire if the PL so deems it necessary. The PL again, you're going to establish those near side, near and far side rally points. Go watch the linear danger area video um, for more info on exactly how to do that. And then the PL is going to decide how to cross given the conditions and the time available, as well as the size of the danger area. So if the far side of the open danger area is within 250 meters, you know, so roughly small arms range, you could probably stretch that out to 300 meters. The PL is going to establish an overwatch position on the near side and he's going to send that lead squad to clear the wood line on the far side. Once they clear and they confirm there's enough room for the rest of the platoon, they're going to signal the platoon to cross, and they're going to cross using traveling overwatch. And again, for specifics on that, go back to the formations and order movement video. Now, if the ODA is larger than 250 meters across or 300, you know, it's all, it's all very situational here. That unit is going to utilize a combination of traveling overwatch and bounding overwatch to cross in a timely manner. So if it's, you know, let's say it's 500 meters across, you're going to cross that first 250 meters. And then once they're within 250 meters of the far side, they're going to move into bounding overwatch. So you're going to be bounding by squads. You're going to have a set piece and a moving piece. Until a foothold is cleared and established on the far side, again, you're going to be bounding by squads or teams. The remainder of the unit is going to trail until the far side is clear, after the, which they will reform and continue on azimuth and continue the mission. So here's a representation of a large open danger area. You're going to use traveling overwatch until you're within small arms range of the far side, after which you're going to move into a bounding overwatch. So this uh, graphic is depicting a squad, so they're bounding by teams across. And there is a road here, which we're going to talk about right now. So series, danger areas with a series or a series of danger areas. Miss my parentheses there. So a double L LDA or double two linear danger areas right next to each other. So you're going to use the obviously the linear danger area technique and you're going to cross both of them as a single LDA. So if you have a combination of a linear and a small ODA, you're going to use a combination of contour 
and LDA crossing. So you're going to want to contour around to the side where there's the least open area available to cross. So, you know, if it's a circle and there's a, a road coming through it, we'll go back here. So you'd want to contour around to a spot here where there's cover and concealment closer on closer together on both sides of the road. Hope that hope that makes sense. That should be that should be pretty easy to understand there. And then you have the linear and large LDA, and then you're going to utilize the aforementioned traveling overwatch and bounding overwatch technique. And that LDA should not be cleared as a separate linear danger area. So exactly what this is depicting here. So you have a road through the middle, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of time just hanging out and setting up security and having to break down security and clear the far side and have your elements split across this open danger area and road. So you're going to want to just get the fuck across it as fast as possible. So again, the PL in the planning phase, which we haven't talked about planning yet. I do want to make a video on how to plan missions and stuff. I'm not an officer, so it's not exactly my forte. However, uh, I might maybe try and find one of my officer buddies to, to, do a partnership with me and teach planning. But in ranger school, you're going to plan for all known danger areas. You're going to plan fires on those, you know, hypothetical rhetorical fires because you don't actually have access to real fires. But in real life, you're going to plan for fires and have grids and type of engagement and such at all known danger areas to include LDAs. And then, you know, like I was saying, speed of security. If you have to directly cross an LDA, you want to do so in the fastest manner possible without compromising your security too much. And that ends our open danger area class. This was a short and sweet one. And hopefully everything makes sense to y'all. If you want me to expand in detail, please hit me with any questions you've got down below. And then next week, haven't planned next week's video yet, but we have... We'll do a hand and arm signals class at some point probably as well. And then there will be a video about individual ranger discipline. And we also haven't done a raid class yet. So those are the three coming up. Not sure which order we're going to do those, but that's what you guys have to look forward to. As always, take care. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend and we'll catch you all next week.